Yeah, so uh, what about people, that, and I've heard, like, you live in San Francisco. Yes. And, I mean, and I've heard some people, I've heard some people of color, black people, and other people of color, and some and, and some white people too, who are like supposedly progressive, um, talking about Kamala Harris, saying, oh, everybody know, and, I, and then they go, oh, everybody knows Kamala Harris is not for black people. Kamala Harris said that she's not gonna do anything for black people. I don't know where that rumor got started. I have no idea, but I know you and I were deeply impacted by Price Cox was African American, who was one of the originators, original people were working in the field of diversity. Plus, he's also the, one of the founders of the idea of ethnotherapy, that your race and your ethnicity impact your mental health and, and that, that therapists need to be able to look at those kinds of things. And Kamala Harris was also mentored by Price. So so what now what do you say? Because when people say that to me, I say, I have never heard where I you know, so where has she said that? When has she said that? So what what do you well, say? Well, see, once again, we're, we're coming to we're dealing with um, I would once again I, I was going to call it what how I see it political immaturity. Now, are there things that Kamala uh, should answer for? She's she's been asked questions about her role as DA in San Francisco. She obviously initiated a number of things that were progressive, but there were some things that she, you know, there are some questions about, you know, for example, when they were, when there was evidence found that could have exonerated a number of uh, people who were uh, imprisoned and thrown in jail for various crimes, was she as aggressive and as assertive in making sure that evidence got out and that some of those convictions could either be uh, relitigated or overturned? Um, I mean, so the, there are different things here and there. I'm, I'm not of the opinion that just because someone is a district attorney that makes them a cop and that that by itself means that they're a bad person or that they somehow are not interested in racial justice. I, there's this racial purity test that happens sometimes on the left that I'm also not exactly comfortable with and I don't know if I would survive that uh, and I'm probably uh, really ticking off some people who are listening to your podcast by what I've said. Hey, I'm probably I not don't... ticking off a lot of people too. So we right, will... and, and maybe yeah. not. But I, I, I yeah. just, I just think that's not fair. If you want to focus on policy and some things that she did or didn't do, well, let's talk about that. But once again, to say that oh, she doesn't care about black people, or she's not really black, or this, that, and the other. Um, when you start to say those things, then you lose all credibility with your argument. So it becomes hard to have a, an, an, uh, uh, an honest conversation with you because you're lacking such credibility by make, taking these extreme positions, which has become part of the problem with our discourse is that people feel like they have to be extreme to get their point across and to say something when in reality, if you could be measured, if you could be thoughtful, if you could do your research. Um, and like I said, I'm not saying that her time at DA was not, there weren't problems. Uh, Jeff Adachi, who was the, um, um, you know, the oh, defense attorney for San Francisco, you know, he raised, he had some point of criticism towards her. And I thought that that needed to be addressed. And I still do. And she also strikes me as someone who's extremely thoughtful, energetic, bright, um, committed and intelligent. And I'm willing to give her um, I wanted to give her a chance and I'm willing to see what she does while holding her and Biden and anybody else to the same level of scrutiny. If I suspect that they're not doing things that I think support a progressive agenda, but I don't think it's fair to say that Kamala Harris is not, um, she's not down or she's whatever words, pejorative words or phrases yeah. that have been used out there. I just don't think that's fair. Yeah, I don't need, you know, and Jewish people are so excited because her husband's Jewish. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, her husband's Jewish, like very Jewish. So everybody's like, oh, we're going to have a Jewish person up there, you know. Um, so I, what, what would you say? What do you say to somebody who says, well, Kamala Harris doesn't support black people? How, how would you respond? I mean, I just say, well, you know, for me as a white person, I go, well, what makes you say that? Oh, well, exactly. Tell me why you say that. What makes you say that she doesn't support black people? Um, once again, have there been problematic things that 
in her record as DA that needs some accounting for? Yes. But then you also have to know too that she secured one of the biggest settlements when it came to, I think it was the, um, the mortgage loan crisis and getting a, a relief for homeowners who may have been forced out of their homes because of some of the predatory lending that was taking place. Um, it, I, just, I just think we just need to be balanced. That's yeah. all. And I think we can debate policy. We can, date, we can debate things on the mayors without going to extreme positions and, and saying that someone is not for Black people. I mean, let's just be real. Are they saying it because her husband is not Black? Are they saying that because they see her as being white or Jason? I mean, these are all things and criticisms that I've heard leveled against other people. I just don't know if that's fair. And yeah, I, I just get very uncomfortable with that when, like I said, I, I think people are just trying to uh, just say things to be bombastic, but they're not really tied to evidence and data. Um, I, save for, once again, her time as tenure as the DA, um, or excuse me, the, um, yeah, the DA, district attorney uh, for San Francisco. So I'm going to give her a chance to see what she can do. And I think she's a vast improvement, if I dare say so myself over the person we have right now, who is the uh, vice president. So I would much rather yeah. kick it with Kamala and then uh, be hanging out with Mike Pence, so. Yeah, and hey, she, and she, she kicks it with Barbara Lee. And you know how we like Barbara Lee. We love Barbara Lee. You know, so, um, and you know, she, she officiated at, at, Price, at Price's a memorial. Yeah, you know? so I'm a, I'm a big fan. And um, but at the same time, like I said, Liking someone doesn't mean that you can't give them critique. I think James Baldwin said, I can love you, but I can critique you. And the same thing yeah. with her is we can critique. And, but be balancing your critique and be, be fair in your critique and uh, question your assumptions. And yes, you can take issue with this without throwing out all of who she is, all of the, everything that she's done and she stands for because of blank. Um, so it's, it's a, for me, it's a both and. It's, it's never gonna be, oh, she's this, let's get rid of her. That's how we got into this whole, I just, the same criticism were leveled towards Hillary Clinton. And, you know, people were saying, and, and Hillary did do some, some shady things when she was running for uh, yeah. president in 2008. I mean, she was, she was trafficking in a little bit of racism. She was comfortable with a little bit of it. Let's not be, let's be honest about it. But then people were saying that she, she made some comment about uh, predators in black communities and, People said that that was horrible. And I'm thinking, well, if you live in one of those communities and you've had to deal with people who have uh, made it unsafe and made you uncomfortable, then I, I don't see a problem. So um, I, 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 think it's, it, I think it's time for us collectively to maintain our consciousness, but to lower the temperature in our discourse and to be more reasoned. And I, as I hear some of the stuff, I almost feel like we are being influenced in part by the uh, the silly the silly man who's about to leave office, and I don't think we need to go to extreme arguments to make really strong points. We can be balanced, and we need to be nuanced. We need to be discerning, and let's just see what happens. And once again, let's hold them accountable for what they do.